Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. FBI raids in multiple locations capture the community's attention. Also tonight, a man accused of stealing a judge's revolver goes back to court. And Chamorro House sparks interest for a new village. In sports, Kanoa FC takes charge of their division with an explosion of goals. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. 48 hours. That's all we get in the week. But those 48 hours, we try to make them last forever. How? By filling in fast with all the right stuff. With a lot of laughter, a little drama, some adventure and a whole lot of love. Dad, Mom's here. It happens pretty quick. Bye, Dad. But it's cool. Because the rest of the week, we talk about our plans. You want to go to the beach? On how to make the next 48 hours last us a lifetime. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, Call the hotline at Hoffa Day, Tirwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Thursday, November 7th, 2019. Breaking news. It has been confirmed that multiple places on Saipan were raided by the FBI today, including the office of Governor Ralph Torres. Around 9 a.m. this morning, Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios says he entered the Juan Atalig Sablon Memorial Building, where the FBI were set up searching Governor Ralph Torres's office. Let's get right about that. Well, I... I know you, even if you don't have a lot of information. No, what is the situation? Well, uh, just like in the variety, we send out a, a, a press release. Mm -hmm. They're, I don't know. I, I seriously don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just told me not to go there. Obviously, there's some investigation going on. That's came in, they were already here. So. Okay, so when you came in this morning, the FBI was already here, though? Yeah. And did they clear out the second floor? No. no. Oh, they didn't? Okay. My staff was still there. Oh, they're all still here? Mm -hmm. They're just investigating the governor's office? Right. Only? And you're, you have no idea, though, why they're here? They didn't tell you anything? Nope. They just said they nope. have to search? Nope. Did they, are they searching you as well, or just the governor? No, they were searching the office. Just the governor's office. Governor's office. Did his house get searched as well? I have no idea. Angel Dimapon from the Office of the Governor released a statement saying, quote, The Office of the Governor received a search warrant and is currently being inspected by federal agents. The Office of the Governor is fully cooperating with the investigation and is confident that any resulting findings will see that there is no reason for concern. The Governor's Office respects the process and will provide additional information as it becomes available, end quote. KSPN reached out to FBI Honolulu Special Agent Jason White, who confirmed the search warrant was executed at multiple places on Saipan today. We heard that the FBI has raided the governor's office this morning. Um, can you ha give me any information on this? 
Uh, well, the only thing the FBI is going to release at this time is we will confirm that we have conducted several, uh, executed several search warrants on uh, in the CNMI today. Uh, other than that, the FBI, we're not going to comment on uh, any ongoing investigations at this time. Okay, and you can't tell me exactly where all the search warrants no, happened, correct? No, no, I'm sorry, can't do that. He also explained the process of a search warrant this sweeping in scope. The background on a search warrant, basically you, uh, you present facts and information uh, working with the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, you come up with a, um, a warrant and it's signed by a judge giving the authorization to search uh, certain specific locations and uh, look for uh, specific items. At 4 p.m., Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios said the FBI were still in the governor's office executing the search warrant and gave a press conference on the information that they have received up to this point. The governor asked me to do this press conference this afternoon to make sure that, that our media uh, are informed with the ongoing, ongoing uh, situations today. So this morning, uh, agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, informed the office of the governor of their request to perform an investigation. The governor's office has complied with all their needs and have been in consistent full cooperation throughout their visit. Uh, we have provided them with all information and access that they have asked for with the intent of being completely transparent and helpful in the investigation. We understand the questions and concerns, of course, that are uh, coming out of our community but we remain committed to preserving the integrity of the ongoing process. We will continue to provide full cooperation and we look forward to a positive clarification of the issues that they're looking into. And we would also like to assure our citizens and residents that has, this has not slowed down any of our government operations uh, nor uh, the, the ongoing uh, initiatives that we have uh, undertaken to improve uh, the, the economy and improve the lives of our people. Lieutenant Governor, my first question is, where is Governor Torres? Why is he not here for this press conference today? Well, you know, uh, Governor uh, this morning was uh, at the hospital his mom uh, was having a procedure. And then he had to come back uh, immediately after um, if he found out that um, the, um, the FBI was uh, uh, doing some investigation, particularly on his office, at his office. So, well, he's um, taking the afternoon off. He's, 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 is in contact with me, I'm in contact with him, and because his office right now is, is uh, the, the agents are up there, I think it would be uh, much more comfortable that <coughs> he is out of the uh, premise. Okay. Does he know why his office is getting ready? Have they told him anything about the search? I, I'm pretty sure they, they, they talked to him. That's something that I cannot answer or I'm at liberty to, to talk about. Do you know what other places got searched on island besides I, the I have no idea. I you know what I heard are rumors but I don't I don't want to speak to that. Uh, I can only speak to the ongoing activities in the governor's office. But photos, along with video taken at different locations around the island, show FBI agents searching Torres Brothers LLC, the Imperial Pacific International Office at the Marina Heights One Building in Puerto Rico, Vescor Village, and it is believed that there are other locations that FBI raided today. Do you know if um, the casino or IPI had anything to do with this raid? Like I said, I, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, I came <coughs> about 
the same time the governor rolled in uh, and I immediately went into teleconference uh, with uh, Dave with uh, Moody's folks and uh, personally this is this is something very surprising to me and to everyone um, and so I'm not I'm not looking outside of my concern for these office right now. Uh, folks are still upstairs and I want to make sure that the operations of the, the governor's office continues to, to run normally. I'm not sure where else uh, the FBI is, is, investigation, is investigating. Maybe you have a better idea about that than I do. We heard that the bank accounts, government bank accounts, were on a freeze. I don't Any think, no, no, no. Uh, he's the Secretary of Finance, he's the, I have he's no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no knowledge, in fact, I, I even met with the president of uh, Bank of Guam, or Marcy Tomokani, uh, during lunch hour, and uh, there was no issue or any mention of any of that. At the moment, I have no information on any freeze to any government accounts. And um, I would probably be informed rather quickly if that, was, if that was the case. Stay with KSPN as we continue to investigate this shocking development. Reporting, I'm Ashley McDowell. And right upon news time, Governor Ralph Torres released this statement. Quote, I hold the highest respect for all law enforcement officials on and off duty. At this time, paramount of my own responsibilities as both governor and a citizen is to provide the fullest measure of cooperation to any other request of me and of my staff. My priority has always been to continue in pursuit of what is best for the CNMI and its people. This has not changed. In every opportunity I have been given to serve this community, I have raised my hand and have sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution. A part of this oath is to respect our system of laws and to allow these processes to take their course. As information is provided, I will continue to do what I have always done, which is to support the goals and aspirations of the people I serve and to remain worthy of this privilege that has been given to me. For this reason, I looked forward to continuing to do this important work with the utmost integrity. Thank you for your understanding and support. End quote. In the courtroom of Chief Judge Ramona Manglonia, a status conference is held today for a male convicted of burglarizing a judge's home back in 2015. Today in district court, defendant Kling Philip Kaipat was not present. Attorney Colin Thompson appeared on his behalf. Psychologist Dr. Ashley Christensen appeared by telephone and provided a summary of the behavioral observations and competency of Kaipat. The court also provided Dr. Christensen a copy of the plea agreement with Kaipat. Kaipat was sentenced to 10 years in jail with five suspended back in 2017 for stealing multiple items from Judge Kenneth Govindo's home, including a gun, ammunition, a watch, and hundreds of dollars in cash. Kaipat pled guilty to burglary and theft. Kaipat is to be released from jail in November of 2021. Another status conference is scheduled for Wednesday, November 13th, 2019 at 1.30 p.m. And the first ever Chamorro Village is currently underway. The Office of the Indigenous Affairs has taken the first step with the newly built Chamorro home. Today, the ribbon cutting for the Guma Higai or Chamorro House took place at the Civic Center in Susupi. Roman Sedella, the resident executive of the Indigenous Affairs Office, says it is vital for the Sinai to preserve the culture. With a Chamorro village slowly developing, this is a chance to learn more about the culture. We started small. Um, we didn't dream big, although we we we, we like to, to see a bigger one. But uh, as we continue to build this uh, culture center. Uh, we start also to, to build a Chamorro village. It's, it's really uh, giving the opportunity for practitioners to have a, a venue, really. And 
I would like to to see our youth involved in all of these because we want to uh, encourage them to uh, and inspire them to to know the culture, get hands on from the actual demonstrators and practitioners that we have right now. Uh, we're losing a lot of them and uh, a lot of weavers, a lot of carvers. Um, we don't have much carvers on island, so. Uh, while we still have them, please, you know, if encourage your kids to, to participate, get them involved uh, in the culture. Tadella says they were fortunate enough to find carvers on island in helping building the Tremor House. Although it may not be an exact replica of the Gumahigai, the concept of what it looked like has been achieved. As we've done our research in the past, there are different kind of thatch house. We try to, uh, we're going to try and do replicas of all of them. So uh, this is just one of them and hopefully, uh, you know, should we have more funding, we'll, we'll do the others as well. The Chamorro House will be open to the public, especially to the youth. I ask also the community to, to you know, when you have time, swing by, uh, give us your advice, recommendations, if you, if you can help, you know, uh, toss in your, your ideas and, and, and help and, and you know together we can make this a uh, uh, center of reality. This is Sally Lemis for KSPN News. Coming up, an event for anyone with a business idea happens this weekend. More details next. IT needs data was still working. It was easier for us to communicate with Hamni. We would video call, show them around. Like this is how bad it hit Rhoda. During the typhoon, when people were, we were struggling to get back on our feet, it like pushed back the date for when to pay your bill. They were helping us so that we don't have to spend the money instead of using it for the bill. We used it to help us to get back on our feet. I'm Vaina Lizama and I'm with the network that works. Watch the Visitor's Channel online, on time, anytime at SaipanTV.com. Where to go, what to see, what to do, restaurants, spas, activities, and culture. It's all in one place, in high definition, on your mobile device. SaipanTV.com. Check it out. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Google Tech Star Startup Weekend begins today. Our Sally Lemus has more. The Google Tech Star Startup is a three day entrepreneurial event that will be happening around Micronesia. Participants from Saipan, Guam, Chuk, Koshrai, Palau, Pompeii, and Yap will be given the chance to propose even just the smallest business idea in hopes to make it happen. And the first step is to simply register into the event. It's a day of networking and forming teams. So we have our participants basically pitch their idea of possible sustainable businesses that can work here in Saipan. Um, they will then form teams. And on day two, as well as day three, they will be mentored um, by um, a lot of uh, influential uh, business owners here in Saipan. Um, so on day three, they will also pitch this idea to a panel of judges um, and um, the winning team will then be recognized um, at, um, throughout the seven islands and could possibly have a chance to compete globally. This is a chance for people to learn more about the business world and get tips on developing a business. We know that Saipan, um, there are very um, uh, many talented people in Saipan and our event will basically give um, these people, uh, business minded people, a platform to share that idea and possibly um, give them the tools and the resources to uh, come out and make their idea a reality. And then I know you, we are, Saipan is still recovering from the various typhoons that did occur. So this is also some sort of, you know, new event that they can come in and maybe spark some more joy and interest, you know. 
Tickets are $1 and is open to everyone. This is Sally Lemis for KSPN News. On Guam, House Speaker questions Congressman Michael St. Nicholas on the delivery of annual congressional address. KUAM reports. Here's your Guam news update. As 2019 nears to an end, the Speaker is calling on the Congressman to deliver the traditional address at the legislature. Here's more. Every year, Guam's delegate to Congress holds an annual address, usually in April, usually at the Guam legislature. Although last year, former Congresswoman Madeline Berdallo delivered what would be her final address in August. Former delegate Robert Underwood tells KUAM in the first year of his first term, he delivered a congressional address. I, I believe I had mine in uh, April. It's now November and Speaker Tina Munya Barnes calling out Congressman Michael Sinicholas, the congressional address mandated by local law. Annually, at a month to be determined by the Speaker and the Congressman, the delegate will appear before the legislature and give an address on federal territorial issues. The congressional address isn't the only one given to the legislature. Both the executive branch and the judiciary give annual progress reports. Chief Justice Catherine Merriman and Governor Lou Leon Guerrero both wrote to Speaker Barnes to secure dates for their speeches this year. I did send a courtesy letter asking uh, what date he wants to work with me on, and I'm open to see what availability is there for him. It's really important for our congressmen to uh, share what's happening in D.C. with the community, and, and this legislature continues to open the door to have that presentation done here. Congressman St. Nicholas is currently under investigation by the House Ethics Committee for allegedly having an affair with a staffer, using campaign funds for personal use, and accepting over-the-limit campaign donations. KUAM sent him an email asking when or if he would hold his annual address, but we didn't receive a response. Speaker Barnes hasn't received a response either. She wrote to Nicholas last week. We asked her if she thought the contentious relationship the delegate has with the legislature and the administration would lead him to give an address in more friendly territory, like Facebook, perhaps. I could not answer that question, Chris. I could not speculate or even think for him on what he wants to do to address our people of Guam, but the invitation was extended to him. Meanwhile, Underwood tells KUAM the address provides a good opportunity for the delegate, policymakers, and the public. Usually most uh, congressional delegates, I think, are eager to have this uh, opportunity uh, to explain uh, their agenda and their activities uh, in front of the uh, Guam legislature, which is the policymaking uh, body for the government. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Go to KUAM.com for more. All right, thank you, Jason. All right, coming up, we've got a sports report. It's that time of the evening. Stay tuned. Faster, easier to use. With live TV, recordings, video on demand, and streaming apps, all in a single place. When you're looking for something new, recommendations are tailored to you. Voice-powered, personalized results to find what you want faster. And the unlimited potential of smart home. The new experience from TiVo is here. Gum Shrimp Company opens daily at 11 a.m. Located on Beach Road in the heart of Garapan. You deserve more. I know it's been hard. Come on, let's go for a ride. Hi, welcome to Dow Rent to Own. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now this feels like home. Dial Rent to Own, making lives better since 1987. Buenos Sports fans.
Brandon Sports fans, not a good night for the NMI U19 boys in Cambodia against Thailand at the Asian Football Confederation qualifying tournament. 21 to nothing. Thailand had the 21. I guess they enjoyed running up the score. All right, the final game for the NMI will be Friday against undefeated Malaysia. Well, speaking of national teams, let's check out the latest from the women's national team. Sunday afternoon, B Division, Kanoa FC in orange, tied for first place. Women's national team in white still looking for their first win of the fall season. J.C. Peering gets past Lillian Podzitski. Two defenders converge, and the goalie comes out, but he still manages to score. Jana Casarina to Katrina Castalis to Nathanette Bloss in the corner. The shot on goal. No score. The women's national team also has Coach Ben Poon playing for them. Coach has got the right idea, but the connection to Christina Atlig does not work out this time. Is Ian Maniago hard-headed or what? He heads the ball right over that high net all the way to a fetness. He didn't score, but look at the smile on his face. It looks like he, he won the lottery. And then he checks his head to make sure it's all right. Kanoa with the old give and go. JC shoots. The ball goes off of Brittany Wally's knee back to JC. He scored four times in this game. The women's national team falls hard to KFC 11 to 4, but don't worry about them. They'll get up for their next game. You know, one thing about doing this job for 26 years. I always see fresh faces as a new generation emerges. The sons and daughters of those who I had on this show not that long ago, it seems like. Well, these new kids are now in those very same places as their fathers and grandfathers were. And to me, it's an amazing sight to see. And one of the treasures of doing this job. Take Ed Diaz, for example. He was a regular on my sports highlights from the very beginning. A six-time MVP in the Rotary Youth Basketball League and a multi-champion in the men's leagues. Many nights he was the best player in the added gym. But he's not playing this year, so imagine my surprise when I see Eddie Jr. at the gym looking sharp, spiffy. What kind of haircut? What do you call that kind of haircut? Zigzag. Zigzag, you the man, man. Yeah. Eddie Jr. is the grandson of Frank Diaz, who was a tireless supporter and promoter of youth basketball, as well as a player himself. Three generations of the Diaz family now can call at a gym their home away from home. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw. Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total resistant exercise or TRX helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today's high only 84, a lot of cloud cover. The low was 75, 88% humidity tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Uh, scattered showers here and there, winds light and variable high 86, low 76, seas 5 to 7 feet, sunrise 615, low tide 1047, followed by a high tide of 517. So that's it. At 545, I, I doubt very many people are talking about the weather though these days. Uh, for a change, they're talking about that top story and what a day you had today. I did. I spent the whole entire day chasing this story. So. Lot yeah, of work today, there, were, there was a lot of information yeah. coming and going, and it was uh, difficult to sort out what was. was true and what mm -hmm. wasn't, and yep. a lot of people not talking, and a lot of people were talking without knowing what without they were knowing. saying. Without knowing, exactly. And, and so I think your job today was uh, chasing <sighs> down rumors it was. and speculation and yep. trying to just get the facts and, and what we were able to report. Absolutely. I reached out to all the sources I could and got all the information. Yeah. It's the ones I could confirm I gave, so yeah, very busy day. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your night. And please do tune in tomorrow night at 6. Good night.